let's start. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Coding Earth. And in the beginning, I want to start with a story. The story happened two weeks before COVID uh, quarantine started in Israel. My customer uh, uh, appointed me and asked me if I can come to them because I'm a consultant. And they said that they have a very major memory leak. So when I hear about memory leaks, I am very urgent to jump on the wagon and to get that challenge because memory leaks are a challenging thing. So I got to their office and haha, after three hours of investigation, I found the problem. And sometimes it can take longer than three hours. Uh, what was the problem? They had a major uh, memory leak because uh, they had uh, some very big data source and they were cloning that data source and passing the, the, all those clones to different objects. And each and every object had a reference to those clones. And each and every clone of data included something like 18 megabytes of data, which is ouch. And you know, cloning sometimes is a, a bad thing. And after uh, something like uh, 35 minutes, uh, we've, we finished uh, crafting the solution to the problem. We created the one uh, source of proof in their application, a service that gave the objects that needed the data, uh, that data, and only that object was storing the data and not all the different objects. So. Uh, that concluded their problem, the company problem. But this is bring this brings me to really memory leaks. Memory leaks will happen to you during your work, even if you are not a JavaScript developer like me. Uh, even in uh, uh, places like C plus plus, C sharp, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So. What we are going to do in this talk, we will talk about memory usage and how we work with memory. And then we'll drill down and on into how we can detect memory leaks both in front-end code in JavaScript and in back-end code in Node.js. So a little bit about myself. As I mentioned, I'm from Israel. I'm Sparks' CEO and I'm a senior consultant. Sparks is my own company. Uh, it includes only one employee, myself. I'm a freelance. Um, I'm both a Google GDE, Google Developer Expert in Web Technologies, and a Microsoft MVP in Development Technologies. Um, this um, might mention that I have a split identity or something like that, you know, Microsoft, Google. I wrote a book in the past, I think around 2014, it was published called Pro Single Page Application Development. Uh, it included the uh, uh, ways to create single page application. It was written uh, back then with Backbone.js and SP.NET. Uh, sorry, both of those uh, technologies, not both of them, Backbone is you know less used today, Angular, Back, uh, React, Vue, whatever. Uh, and SP.NET Web API is, uh, was replaced by .NET Core, SP.NET Core. So what we're going to do in the next uh, 20 minutes, I'll start by introducing how we work with application memory. Then we'll talk a little bit about memory leaks in JavaScript. And then we will try to understand how the process of detecting memory leaks works both in front end and in the back end. So, Let's start with memory lifetime. When you want to use memory in your application, you will allocate that memory, not you, but the operation system will allocate that memory to your program, to your application. Once the memory was allocated, you can use it. How, how do you use it? The program is going to read from the memory and write to the memory. And that's simple. Once the memory is unused, you will release it or the operation system will release that memory uh, to the free pool of uh, free memory. So you can talk, uh, you can look at the memory like uh, a connected graph. What I mean by that, uh, you have a root in this, uh, in this slide, it's the node one, and that graph starts 
from that node and then there are connections, references from one memory uh, to, to another. So what about the zero here, the node zero, an unreferenced memory? What's, what's going to happen? So this is where garbage collectors comes into place. A garbage collector is a software that looks for unreachable objects uh, and then re remove them from memory. By that, it is clearing the memory and then the operation system can use that memory later on for allocation, read, write, whatever. And there are two main algorithms for garbage collection, collecting. One called reference counting garbage collection and the second is mark and sweep. So what is a reference counting garbage collector, a collection? An object is said to be a garbage if there are zero references pointing to it. So if you look at this uh, example, A has zero references, so it is cleared because it is cleared, B is cleared, and then the uh, counter for references in D is uh, subtracted by one. The problem in uh, reference counting garbage collection is, you know, circular references, how you can use those or how you can detect when something is in references if you have circular reference. This is what, <clears throat> sorry, this is why mark and sweep is more used today. What is mark and sweep? This is the algorithm that uh, uh, V8, the, the engine, the JavaScript engine uh, uses, the JavaScript engine of Chrome uses underneath. A mark and sweep, you, uh, the, the garbage uh, collector will mark the garbage collection route, and then it will travel from that route to each and every node that is referenced and mark it as active. All the other non-referenced uh, objects will be swept from memory, as easy as that. What is a memory leak then? A memory leak is uh, something that might happen to you. It's when you uh, the application doesn't require some memory, but that memory isn't returned to the pool of free memory. And you know, that can't happen in JavaScript. It will happen in JavaScript. So these are common JavaScript memory leak pitfalls. Let's start. First, accidental global variables. This is when you are not using let, var, const, or whatever to declare some variable. It is easily uh, uh, be detected by linters, and it is easily uh, uh, can be avoided using the string use strict in your JavaScript code. So don't fall into that. In the past, that was something that were was causing memory leaks from time to time. Forgotten timers and callbacks. You are starting some interval by using set interval function. That set interval gives you um, um, a handle that later on you can clear that interval. But if you forget, you're forgetting this timer, then the callback for that timer will continue working and working and working. Another thing here is uh, callbacks for uh, functions. You have an on click function and some object that gets that uh, callback and you're not clearing that object. And as uh, as uh, as uh, when that co uh, happens, you are not going to clear the callback, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can use um, rem clear interval or clear uh, timeout or uh, unreference the callbacks that you are using if you can. The third uh, pitfall is closures. When you have a reference from the parent, sorry, when you have a reference uh, for a closure, a closure is a variable in some function that is staying alive even though the function finished execution, uh, its execution. So when you have closures, unfortunately, they will stay in memory after the function ended, the, those variables will, will keep uh, being alive in memory and they will get stuck in memory up until you clear them. So closures can cause memory leaks. Out of DOM references, this is only in the front end. When you're removing some or detaching some document object model 
object from uh, from your HTML, for example, but you have some reference to a callback, for example, on click event or things like that, this can cause DOM references uh, to uh, be still be in memory and then cause out of DOM references memory leaks. So now we understand the bit the, the pitfalls that can cause memory leaks. Let's un let's understand how we can profile or how do you do you do a, a, a profiling for memory leaks? So first of all, establish baseline. By what I'm uh, saying by that, uh, you can open the browser in incognito mode, which won't affect uh, the uh, with extension uh, your environment. You can create a Git branch uh, or anything else in order to establish that baseline. Once you establish the baseline, you did draw the line, you start by collecting your, the data. Later on, we will see how we can collect the data. Uh, you will collect uh, the data, and then you will analyze the results. According to the anal analysis that you are going to do, you will tune up the application. After you tune up the application, you will test and measure again to understand if the memory leak was uh, uh, you, you really detected that memory leak and you find some so, uh, solution to that. And you will keep on this, this cycling of profiling up until you will solve the memory leak. If you didn't solve the memory leak, then you will collect the data again, analyze the results, tune up, test and measure, and etc. etc. So this is the process. So how can we detect the memory leak in the front end? First of all, the browser developer tools. Uh, I'm using Chrome Developer Tools, but you can also use Firebug or the Developer Tools in uh, Edge, in IE, uh, to do the same things. Uh, you can also use the object called uh, Performance on the window object in the front end. That object gives you the opportunity to get data about the memory usage of the application. You will have to craft something by yourself in order to do that, but this is another place that you can use in order to detect memory leaks. So with that, let's start and let's get into our first demo of today. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to run some HTML. Let's run it. Okay, so we have an application, and once I'm going to press this button, this application is going to leak like a uh, like a ship that is drowning. Okay, uh, and pressing this stop leaking will stop the leakage. So I will open first of all the developer tools, and I will show you uh, one place that you can start with when you are trying uh, to understand if you have a memory leak. So you can open the performance monitor, okay? Right now, the performance monitor will give you a lot of indication about the DOM nodes, the JS heap, which is 3.9 megabytes, and the CPU usage. Let's press the button and let's see how the leak is starting. Okay, you can see that the JS heap is starting to grow and grow and grow. We have a lot of DOM nodes entering our application. Let's stop it for a second. And you can see that all these uh, lines, all this graph is getting higher. So we have a lot of DOM nodes here and a lot of memory. And this memory isn't getting back to the pool of free memory. You can see that this, uh, these lines, the JS heap size isn't going down, okay? So we have a problem. This is one way to understand or to see a memory leak in action. So you will use the performance monitor and run it. Another place that you can use is the performance tab. Let's start by recording. I'm getting into the performance tab in the developer tools and I, I'm starting a profiling. I press the leak button. One, two, three, stop that leakage, and let's stop the profiling. Now what we are going to see here uh, is a lot of details. Uh, so don't be afraid of this, this, uh, this timeline. It can be frightening. Uh, what you should look at when you're searching for memory leaks after you profile something is this blue line here. You can see here that this blue line is the hip, and the hip is going higher and higher, getting higher and higher, okay? 
So we started, you can see in, the, in this indication, from 11 megabytes and we finished around 14 megabytes. Another place that you can see is this place, okay? This is the memory uh, of uh, the application during time. So you can see here the green line is the amount of nodes that I have in the browser, uh, HTML nodes. And you can see the blue line is following that same thing here. Okay, so we can see that the JS heap is also getting higher. So this is another place that you can you can use in order to detect or to monitor your application. Let's see the third place. Memory. Memory tab can also help you to understand uh, if you have memory leaks. So what you're going to do is take a snapshot. And after you, you take one snapshot, which is the baseline for your, uh, for your application, and it takes some time, let's uh, wait for it to finish, I will press the leak button and then a few seconds later, I will stop it. Okay, so we, we, here is the snapshot. Let's press the leak button and let's stop it. And let's take another snapshot. So now I have two snapshots. One is the memory usage at first. This is my baseline. And the second is what happened after a few seconds, a few minutes or whatever, okay? Now I will wait uh, that uh, this snapshot will finish. And what you can see here is that I have a few options. For example, comparison. I can uh, compare the first, uh, uh, sorry, the second snapshot to the first snapshot and see uh, how things are going to, 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 to look like. Okay, you can see that there are a lot of deleted objects. There are a lot of new objects here. The delta is 600. The allocated size is very big. Um, we have a very big array here, okay, that you can see here. And this is, this is the place that you can monitor the objects and see if you have memory leaks. How do you monitor the objects? You will open those uh, squigglies and you will try to understand what is this object later on in your application. So if you're asking yourself, what is going on in my application? Why it's so leaking? So let's take a look at the code of leak and stop leaking. So the first code here is, I'm, I'm just adding event listener to the make leak and stop leak uh, buttons. In the stop leak, I'm clearing some interval and I'm writing to the console something. The make leak is the thing that creates the memory leak. What I'm doing here is I'm setting some, in, uh, some uh, interval and in each and every 500 milliseconds, I'm just pushing to X here a new array with length of 100,000. I'm also running some function called create nodes. Create nodes will add 100 nodes HTML nodes, divs into my application, into my, uh, um, into some uh, place in my uh, document. And this will cause the memory leak because each and every 500 milliseconds, I'm adding a new array that has some memory footprint. And I'm also adding a few nodes, 100 nodes uh, to my DOM. And these, these things will, eventually will crash my application later on because I will get, I will reach uh, out of memory exception uh, because uh, this interval will, you know, finish all my memory uh, in about five to 10 or even 15 minutes. So this is the example of how we can detect memory leak in, uh, in the front end. And so let's talk about the back end. How can we detect memory leaks in Node.js? Uh, Dan asked about Express, so Dan, this is for you. So you can also use Chrome developer tools to monitor Node.js application. How do you do that? You will run Node in inspect mode. Once you're running in inspect mode, you can use the memory tab in order to uh, to allocate, uh, locate memory leaks. Another way to do uh, or to, to monitor your application is use some code. For example, node mem watch or head dump 
are very known libraries that helps you to register to events and dump some uh, memory usage uh, into the disk. And later on, once you have those dumps, you can look at them, open them, and uh, search for the memory leaks or understand if you have a memory leak. So with that, let's detect a memory leak in a backend. So I'm jumping back into my uh, IDE. And in this uh, IDE, I'm going to do node dash dash inspect index.js. This is going to run my node application and in inspect mode. This is the flag for inspect mode. Once I run this, I can open the browser. Let's open the browser, Chrome, um, inspect device. You will go to Chrome dash dash inspect dash devices, and you will wait that it will find this uh, this application. Okay, so it it found the application that I'm currently running in Node, and it enables me to inspect that application. Once I'm pressing the inspect uh, link here, I can see the memory usage right now, and I can take a snapshot. Okay. So this is going to be my baseline. Application is running. I have 2.3 megabytes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a memory leak. How can I do that? I'm going to, to use uh, autocannon. There, this is a process that will run and for 30 seconds and blast the local host uh, 3003, which is the, the current uh, location of my server. Uh, with re HTTP requests. You can also use a tool called uh, Siege uh, to do the same thing here. So let's run it. And what's going to happen right now, I'm going to blast the server with a lot of requests. And uh, now I can take a snapshot again, and you can see that the memory got to 5.9 me megabytes. And let's take another snapshot. And you can see that it's uh, 8.1. And again, I'm going to use the comparison uh, from the, the third snapshot to the second or to the first. And you can see here that a few things uh, jump into, in, into, our, uh, in, into our vision. Uh, the amount of new objects, date objects, and object here and numbers is getting higher and higher. This is probably the cause to our memory leak. So what's going on in my application? Let's take a look at the application. Let's understand what's, what is going on. So in my application, which is very simple, I have a server that for each request is going to push to this array an object with the request URL and date. So Logs aren't supposed to be in memory. You should dump them into file. This is the solution to this memory leak, okay? But it shows you that when you have big objects and big arrays, you can create a memory leak later on in, in your application. So don't uh, stick uh, big objects into your memory, both in Node and in your front end. So that was the example of how we can detect memory leaks in the backend. I'm not going to drill down into how to use um, uh, head dump, for example, or all the uh, coding um, uh, options, but you can take a look at uh, those libraries later on after you saw this session. So JavaScript memory can, and it will leak eventually. You saw a lot of pitfalls that we should be aware of in, the, in this uh, talk. Please monitor your production be before, uh, so you will find memory leaks as soon as possible. The customer that I talked uh, the story from the beginning was in a critical application that was used by fire departments. You don't want a fire department application to crash during some ex uh, uh, accident or some something. So be aware of that. Be prepared to solve the leakage problems as soon as possible. Thank you.